Thank you for downloading this podcast from the British Theatre Guide. For more information about British Theatre Guide, please visit britishtheatreguide.info. Stand and Be Counted is the UK's first ever theatre company of sanctuary. Formed in 2010 and consisting of Rosie McPherson, John Tomlinson and newer recruits Hannah Butterfield, the company's main purpose is to make work with, about and for those seeking sanctuary in the UK and internationally. Their latest production is their broadest collaboration yet. Devised and performed by a multilingual international cast of five, the show Where We Began centres around Tafadswa Muchenje, an artist born in Zimbabwe who has himself faced the threat of deportment from the UK. I'm joined by Tafadswa, also known as Taf, and writer-performer Rosie McPherson to discuss the show as well as the development of Stand and Be Counted to date. So, Taf, just start off by telling us how you first got involved with SBC and this particular project. I was really lucky that my girlfriend's dad knew John, and he told me about this project that was happening that might be impactful for me because they covered, you know, issues of migration and deportation and, and things like that. So I went to go there, watch their show, Tanya, in London, and afterwards I had a chat with them, told them how impactful the show was for me and you know I told them my, my story my situation um, and when I met them I was sort of midway through going for the immigration battle with the home office so yeah we, we got talking and from there we came up with this concept which built and built and we did an r and in Doncaster I think 2017 January and then we did nothing for a year and then got back together did another R&D and it's just gradually grown and grown into this this amazing thing. And, you know, I've been really lucky because it's not only a way for me to talk about what's happened to me, but it's a way for other people, and for the other artists, rather, to tell their stories and, and, and to share their experiences. Mm. So um, what situation did you find yourself in, if you don't mind me asking? What uh, was no. the sort of position you were in when you saw that um, show, Tanya? Yeah, I was on a indefinite leave to remain sort of process. So basically, as... A migrant, you go through various levels of migration. So it, you start out as either a highly skilled migrant visa or, you know, the various other levels. So we, we went through that. Then we applied for leave to remain. And then we were in the process of applying for indefinite leave to remain, which my family all got apart from me. Hmm. And their, their reasons for it were absolutely ridiculous. Um, one of the biggest reasons was that my family didn't have indefinite leave to remain at the time. So when I got my letter saying you're rejected for that reason, but my family had gotten indefinitely to remain, it was really? And yeah, so it was a long process. So yeah, like I said, I met them while I was midway through that. Um, I think that was like the first year of of it. So it wasn't really midway because it it went on for three years. Oh, wow. And that sort of back and forth. Yeah, back and forth. Yeah, trying to explain the situation. And unfortunately, I had to go to court. To, oh, wow. to prove my case um, and even the judge himself on the day just said you shouldn't be here right like, this this is wrong wow um, and it, for me it, it just showed how even the home office didn't know what they were doing because the, the barrister who turned up that day didn't didn't care right. he wasn't prepared he just came in read a couple of notes the judge said you shouldn't be here and he was just like yeah I kind of agree <laughs> with you actually <laughs> <laughs> so it's a um, procedural thing. Yeah, just so um, it know. kind of it felt for me. It felt you know how they often say that they've got to meet a quota, and for me that's what it felt like. I was just a number where I had to meet. Unfortunately, that quota where we've got to reject a certain amount of people and let through a certain amount and of this people. After you'd been living in the UK for four and a half years, no, because I I'm on a weird oh. sort of I'm in a grey area. So I came when I was about. 11 and a half so I'm probably going to explain this really badly but my barrister basically said that because I'm in this grey patch I will never ever be able to live in the UK for half my life within the time frame that they want me to right right. so every time that I reach the amount of time that I've lived in the country required. Legally, I won't have the r- the lived in the right, right amount of time at a certain point of my life. Yeah. It is so confu- yeah. like it's so confusing. Yeah, but I mean, you've been here yeah, how long? Any sense. I've been here now eleven years. Eleven, you're right. Yeah, and I'm 23, and I came yeah. when I was 11. Yeah. So theoretically, for me, like I've lived a half my yeah. life, but yeah. legally, I really haven't. Right. 
Because every time that, that yeah. time elapses, you get a letter saying yeah. you, you know. You exactly, yeah. So it, it's, it, it is just absolutely mind-boggling, mm-hmm. and I could go on and on about it, but we'd just be sitting here spewing yeah. and just getting angry. Well, well, I mean, the positive thing from that is that you saw the show, Tanya, and you yeah. really engaged with it. Yeah. So. Yeah, no, it was it was really really fortunate. I was really lucky. And I think you know I've I've seen a lot of theatre that looks to tell these stories, but not from the angle of the people themselves. It's kind of like let's make a story, let's be political, but we're not really hitting the target. We're not really sending the message properly. And I think with this one, it was just so hard hitting. And for me, because when I was going through that situation, I thought, oh, it's just me. Like, it's it. Obviously, I knew that it was happening to other people, but in in that moment, you, you kind of isolate yourself and you become selfish because all you've got is yourself and you feel like no one will understand. Mm. And watching that show and realising that people like Emily, who came here seeking asylum, mm. whereas I came as, as a migrant. Mm. So for, for her to come here looking for asylum and then to be treated in that manner and be put in a... Uh, detention centre and, and treated like you know worse worse than criminals mm. for me it just broke my heart and it made me realise that actually one it's good that they're getting her story out and getting the story out of, of of the other women who have gone through that and then it made me think like actually there's I, I didn't know that so it made me think that other people don't actually know what I'm going through as well so maybe I need to go out there and tell people the story and I think for me that's what it's always been about Mm. because there isn't sort of communication between people I think people are too afraid to to ask questions and to to learn you know because like I'm I'm confused by I don't I don't know I don't know all the answers but I can tell you what I've been through which might help you understand it Mm. you know and that's for me that that was a wake-up call as well when I was watching Emily's Mm. like I didn't understand it but I learned because I spoke to these guys and I spoke to Emily and I watched the play and it made me more active and that's probably why, you know, I'm doing this. Yeah, great. But Rosie, I wonder if you can just talk us through a bit that, because this is now sort of a strand of your work yeah. you're doing, of kind of sharing, sharing stories, as Taff says, sharing sort of people's actual experiences yeah. of these processes. And Tanya, as we've referred to, had this central performer who had experienced these, was it Yarlswood? Yeah, she was in Yarlswood yeah, three Yarswood. times. And had been seeking asylum for, you know, a decade or yeah, something. Yeah, for um, Gosh, right, yeah. yeah. And this is another case where you've got Taff and others talk, mm. talking about their own experiences. But it's also a sort of, it's, bi- so it's biographical in some ways, but it's yeah. also f- fictionalised. Yes. Or, you know, it's not just an autobiographical yeah. piece or yeah. biographical piece. And you're the writer for this yes. this, and also for Tanya. Can yeah. you talk us through, a bit through what this show includes, what, you mm-hmm. know, how that fits in with Tanya and others? Yeah, I mean, it's, yeah, it's a direct response, follow-up to Tanya. Mm-hmm. And we definitely, as a company, wanted to think about... Tanya was absolutely campaign theatre, it was protest theatre, it was angry and we need to do something and everybody needs to know what's going on here and so this version of telling these stories is more an effort to include lots of people in the room and not just make a show that you know will preach to the people that already agree but possibly don't know Mm -hmm. the ins and outs Mm -hmm. Um, you know we want to reach across the divide with this one Mm -hmm. and it's always got to be people telling the truth you know no one can tell it better than the person who has lived it and we don't personally think that anyone else should you know it's it's not my job to filter anyone else's experience so yeah I suppose in in terms of a writing process for where we began it's kind of back to front because we started with the R&D that Taff mentioned and that was you know in a room with Taff, myself, the director, Hannah, and then three other uh, international artists, Shereen Farquhar, Zoe Katzler and Gail LeCornick. And basically, we've no central concept for the show yet. Who, what's your relationship to migration? What experiences have you had of coming here or living in other countries in the world? Mm. And there are a couple of our cast who are in the midst of not being quite sure what Brexit means for them. So there's, yeah, lots of different relationships to place and home. Mm -hmm. And that was kind of part of recruiting people, was that uh, what is your relationship to home? Because it was never the answers that 
mm. you know, you think... You normally associate with Yeah, home. or that we have this idea of home as place, and then anybody that we ever ask, it's not anything to do with place. Mm. So that was like, right, yeah, we need to really explore like, how people decide for themselves who they are and what your identity is. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, then uh, lots of kind of devising with the way that people wanted to share what they wanted to share and what they didn't want to share, and then creating a fictional parallel world that kind of looks like our world... Well, at the beginning of 2017, (laughs) it felt like, let's push it to, you know, this could happen, and then (laughs) in the last couple of years, things have happened, yeah. Yeah. Um, So it's it's not as far removed now as it was. So can you maybe tell us just a bit more about this uh, this particular show and what audiences can expect from it I mean without sort of giving the whole thing away but, yeah. but sort of what, what does it feel like to be an audience member of this show yeah so um, you will be deliberately confused hmm. and you will be misled and the hope is that you will feel in some ways what it's like to be a part of this system we really play with the idea of bureaucracy and how we are all positioned within our identities Mm -hmm. and very much want to give audiences space in the chaos to connect with the stories that they hear from other people but also like what does that mean for me like um, what if this happened to me Mm. because the the concept is that everybody governments across the world have decided that every citizen has to return to the place on their birth certificate in order to stop global warming. So it's kind of like a left and right agreement yeah. huh. uh, where they've all sold us out. <laughs> Cherry <Yeah. laughs> But it's fun. It fun. It <laughs> it's fun. fun and sad and serious yeah. and you'll, you'll get all the feelings. Yeah, I think it, as a mechanism it kind of, you know, it makes people, it allows them the opportunity to think about, okay, whether they know someone who might be put in that situation or if they themselves might be put in that situation, or if anyone in their family, like, for example, there's so many families across the country where, you know, someone's been born somewhere else, you know, in France, or and you were born here. So it makes it makes the audience member think about, actually, hold on, could this, could this happen to me? Could I be split apart from my family? Or, you know, and, and, and that's what we're trying to achieve, to confuse people, but at the same time to get them to think about the realities of what the, the dynamics of what would happen to them or their family or their friends or people they know work with and really take that in and then through the stories it really enhances those those emotions and those themes about identity about home about belonging and it really makes you question and think like you know I mean there was a guy in the audience who said that he was really thinking about himself and then thinking about the people sat around him mm. trying to th- figure out you yeah, know what would what, it mean for yeah, them what, would, what yeah. it would mean for them and and that was just brilliant hearing mm, that answer. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, a, a lot of the um, sort of the most interesting responses to the current political climate, I think, have been, in theatre have been have involved uncertainty yeah. and like uncertainty of form, yeah. and reflecting that yeah. sort of moment yeah. we're in, where, yeah. as you say, nobody knows what yeah. the implications of yeah. these yeah. things are. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we've talked a lot about. We seem to be at a point where it's it's not okay to not know the answers and so it means that people aren't asking questions um, because we don't want to appear stupid but yeah. all of this stuff is deliberately confusing they <laughs> they <laughs> want us to be confused so that we we don't find out and we don't push back against yeah. things that happen mm-hmm. um yeah so it's definitely trying to play with that in a way that's like it's okay that we don't know as long as we want to as mm-hmm. long as we mm-hmm. listen to each other and yeah I think it all kind of ties ties back into what we said earlier about how the goal is to get people to talk. The goal is to get people to, you know, ask questions, you know, drop the fear and be confident in asking a question because at the end of the day, we're not going to get anywhere yeah. unless we all are on the same page. You know, and how Rosie likes to say, it's them versus us. <laughs> <laughs> and you've got to break, you've got to break that divide. Yeah, um, and you've you beat know, the machine. Yeah, you've got to, you've got to beat the machine. So I mean, you, earlier on, Rosie, you did sort of draw the distinction with Tanya. Tanya being a real sort of piece of process here. Yeah. It sounds like you're not that far away. From <laughs> <laughs> you never move that far away. From I get called Ranty Rosie. <laughs> <laughs> 
could you tell me a bit more, particularly Rosie, I suppose, because you are one of the co kind of leaders of this company, co artistic directors, I guess. Can you tell me a bit more about your journey with the company yeah. since you formed it in 2010? Yeah, so, yep, started in 2010 with John Tomlinson. And um, essentially, it was more actors wanting to make work for ourselves that was interesting. I particularly was struggling with female roles and the type of stuff I was getting seen for and feeling frustrated. So we, we started off with a devised piece called Elastic Bridge, which we toured in 2010. Yeah, starting off at the Salford Lads Club, mm-hmm. uh, where dreams are made. <laughs> and uh, then next up was Inside that we took to Edinburgh, which was my first attempt at writing. Mm-hmm. And at this point, didn't feel like I was a writer, just really had this idea that I thought would be great, and I didn't get to do stuff like this before. Mm-hmm. And John had moved into producing by this point. So we were kind of finding our pockets within what we need to make a show happen. And at this point, I suppose, wanting to talk about mental health, it was a show about Stockholm Syndrome. And I suppose this is where I started feeling like, yeah, that you can actually use theatre to talk about stuff. That's, mm-hmm. And like get a conversation going. That's cool, let's do more of that. Then Tanya was the next one, and that was Love an Online Petition, and had signed one that, uh, as I'd started reading, thought, God, what country is doing this? This is shocking. And then realised that it was about Yarl's Wood in Bedford, and this was... And as someone who is political and pays attention and feels like I, I should have known that was going on, and I didn't, and it was all very secretive. Um, so that was... I guess when SBC got really political and it was like, okay, we need to properly use what we do to make space for the people that need to be heard. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and so that was very much researching with women who had been in Yarswood and then working with City of Sanctuary, mm-hmm. who we had said to them, we would love for this to be played by someone who wanted to be in a show and talk about what it's been like. And they went, oh, we know the perfect person. Step in, Emily Chikaze Wood, mm. who was just brilliant. And she just, yeah, I just And that was just with, with the City of Sanctuary, is it? Yes, yeah. 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 And so that is what led to us becoming a theatre company of Sanctuary. So uh, they recommended that we apply. Because uh, essentially, you work, if it is with, about, for asylum seekers, refugees, further afield, just welcoming those new to Britain and making sure that the people behind the headlines are considered and, you know, we're treating people like human beings and uh, making sure that we're supporting integration in, in the communities, which is something that we, where do we want to continue to do? And how do you facilitate that? Because, I mean, there's, there, we've talked a fair bit about the impacts of the actual theatre productions. Mm-hmm. And it's, you know, clearly Tanya has an impact because Tanya mm-hmm. went to see it and mm-hmm. came to talk to you. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and, and you've ended up uh, right. in this process together, yeah. making this work together. What about other ways that, because I know that SBC is really interested in exploring other sort of work with asylum seekers, refugees. Yeah. yeah, so we do a lot of workshops and community projects across the year as well. Uh, we just finished in Leicester with Art Beach doing The Visitor, which was a performance parade that was made with lots of different community groups across Leicester. So that was a really nice one because it's a, a way to you know, make sure people that would like to try something like singing, dancing, acting can meet other people and make friends in their area and just, you know, let's hang out and get to know who else is there. And they were amazing. None of them were performers and they just... We just went for it and it was beautiful. And then we do creative skills for employment workshops with particularly Syrian refugees, um, basically just working on confidence and language skills because you know, you've got all these really experienced people and the only barrier for them is language. Mm-hmm. And obviously having been through awful things, it's confidence. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so helping, helping with that. As a writer, then, how is this process different? Because obviously you're working with multilingual and international mm. <laughs> cast who will all have different 
experiences and you know um, ways of working. Yeah. How have you kind of facilitated that? Um, how, how have you experienced that in sort of being in the mix? Mm, I think for me it was it was, it was always going to be a very exciting and sort of full on experience. So I was studying drama and theatre arts so I was on the course of sort of becoming an actor and unfortunately I didn't finish graduating because of the whole immigration situation. Um, so for me it was always going to be exciting and really full on um, and I think the prospect of working with such a diverse team just opened my eyes to the differences in styles and attributes and characters within you know the performing world. And I've been very, very lucky because everyone's been really nice. <laughs> but yeah, no, it's it's a it's a real learning, real learning curve because there are so many, so many ways that you can do one thing. And working with so many international and talented people, you just pickpocket. Um, and I think our work is like that as well. With this project, we've taken little bits from each and every one of us and really put it into our characters and really built them up and made them, you know, true. Yeah, we, we definitely wanted the fact that we are working with theatre makers from across the world who have loads of different skills. To The act of making the show itself is a celebration of cultural exchange because it wouldn't be what it is without all of these different types of performance as well as these people. Um, and, yeah, for me to get to know these people and the you know the voices of each of them before then creating a character for them is really interesting because yeah. there's just to be able to bring the real mannerisms and little details of people <laughs> is pretty unique yeah. so I got to play with that and then working with um, different languages I mean that was that, that was just a case of this is what you need <laughs> to say can you translate it for me <laughs> But definitely playing with using language in a way where the audience feel maybe that they should understand and then they don't understand and then, oh, what, what's going on? And, you know, what's that like when you don't understand what's being said to you? And as we, as we speak, you've literally just done the first night, isn't it? Yeah, yesterday. Opened in Doncaster. Yeah, yes. yeah. How are you feeling about the sort of the impending six-week or, um, you know... I think yesterday everyone was like, I was watching all the other Rosie and everyone else, and they were all like, Oh my god, oh my god. And I, they were probably getting really annoyed with me because I was just like, Yeah, I'm zen. Yeah, asking him how so was it was, I'm so zen. <laughs> what? <laughs> I've got anxiety, I don't understand. But no, it, you know, it, it was really, for me, it was such a long thing, a, a long process, and I was just thinking, like, this. For me, it's, it's a vehicle to get this message out there. And that is what drives me, keeps me like motivated and focused. Um, and, I, and I'm proud of everyone and I'm proud of how the show went yesterday. And I'm so excited and stoked for the next couple of weeks. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to seeing how going to different places with different responses that yeah. we'll have. Um, yeah, and this is our biggest and widest tour yet. So it's exciting to be able to take it and especially to places that don't normally get work like this. Like that was a thing for me growing up that mm. had to travel far if I wanted to go and see mm. the stuff that I was interested in. So it's important to us to keep yeah. doing that. I think that's a good thing because, you know, it goes into what the company was aiming to, to achieve was to get people to talk. Yeah. And by focusing in certain places where people may not agree with sort of the same ideals that we have, to, put, to bring something like this for them to see it, to open those doorways, for them to think, actually, hold on, and then for, for them, hopefully, to, have, to meet with us afterwards and have a chat mm -hmm. and just hear our stories. And, you know, I think it's a brilliant, brilliant thing. So, yeah, I'm really, really looking forward to it. And there could be somebody out there in the audience that's in the position yeah. you're Yeah, in completely. And, and, yeah, and, and that's, that is what I'm, I'm looking to do, like, hopefully make an impact that someone feels like, okay, it's not all doom and gloom, you know, there are people out there and, you know, even afterwards they can come and have a chat with us and I'm just, yeah, mm -hmm. I'm a vessel <laughs> to help you. <laughs> but no, it, you know, it, it had such an impact on me and if I could do that for someone else it would mean the world.
Well, as we say, where we began literally just opened yeah. uh, as embarking on a six week tour to venues across the country, including York, Newcastle, Durham, Birmingham, Sunderland, Sheffield, Liverpool, Bradford, all over the place, and culminating in three nights at Camden People's Theatre at the end of October. And you can have a look at sbctheatre.co.uk for full dates. But for now, um, Taff and Rosie, thank you so much for your time. Thanks so much for talking to us. Thank you very much, Mark. Cheers. You've been listening to a podcast from British Theatre Guide. For more information, please visit britishtheatreguide.info.